business. And we'll be talking to him and previewing this great derby, which over the years has provided us with excitement, goals and no little drama. Some will be slotting it through nicely for Bell. Stewart is away on the left. Lee. Pulled across for Law! Dennis has done it! At 310, it's motorcycle racing with Franco Ancini, the world 500cc champion at Brands Hatch, making an appearance in the final and decisive round of the MCN Superbike Series. But the challenge for the title is as keen as it could be between the holder, Ron Haslam, and the new British champion, Roger Marshall. And Roger Marshall not pulling away now as he did at... In St. John. Well, thanks, Dickie. And, of course, the big derby here at Old Trafford claiming the lion's share of the show. But first, the news that the man who's been deeply involved in many a United City derby, Malcolm Allison, is back in business. Just over an hour ago, Malcolm was named as a new Middlesbrough manager, only four months after having guided Sport in Lisbon to the League and Cup double in Portugal. Now he faces the task of pulling struggling Middlesbrough off the bottom of the second division. Well, immediately after signing, our reporter David Burton spoke to him earlier at the press conference. Malcolm, from taking Sporting Lisbon to a, a double cup and league to come to the bottom of the English second division is quite a, a step down, so it seems. Well, why did you choose Middlesbrough? Well, uh, I, I, I didn't necessarily choose Middlesbrough. Uh, they, they asked me if I'd be interested in the job. And uh, my wife wanted to come back to England, and uh, I thought that, uh, OK, yeah, I'll go and take it. I like working, and... Uh, there's, there appears to be quite a bit of work to be done here. Did your success with Sporting Lisbon, do you think, sort of convince others that you were still capable of achieving success? Well, in football, you know, it's, it's very difficult to get success because very few people get it. And uh, I think it's a profession whereby you have to suffer and, and then, you, then, then you succeed sometimes. And uh, I think the all-round experience makes you a much wiser man and uh, much better at your job. Of course, coming to a depressed area economically and a depressed football town, what do you think you can do about it? Well, I hope to bring a bit of excitement to, it, to the town and to the, to the team and um, see a few happy faces. You know, when the team's winning and doing well, you know, it makes people very happy. What do you know about the present team? Very little, very little, but... Uh, um, I think I'll soon get to know them. Do you think it was important for Middlesbrough to try and get a bit of the limelight away from Newcastle with the uh, signing of Kevin Keegan? Who in Newcastle? <laughs> We're a little out for 40 miles up the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's nice. I think that uh, the area needs uh, some, uh, some limelight and uh, Kevin Keegan's given it to Newcastle and I hope that the team and myself can give it to Middlesbrough. Big Mal, we wish him well. And of course, it's ironic that Malcolm Allison is back on Manchester Derby Day. And that's what our programme focuses on now. We talk to some of the older players who have made this such a great occasion over the years. We meet one of the game's new boys and the rival managers and fans. We also, of course, bring you our usual league preview, take a look back at some exciting European action, and Jimmy Greaves joins us from the Midlands to give us his views on the Chester report and the boxing game. And if you're wondering what boxing has to do with Jimmy Greaves, You'll find out later. But first, the news that Danish striker Alan Siemenson will not make his debut for Charlton against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge today. His former club, Barcelona, have still not given him international clearance, so he'll set out this afternoon's match. But now, Manchester United against Manchester City. It's a game that has split the city since first played in 1894. And as you can see, this is the 105th league clash between the two, with United having scored 37 wins. There have been 36 draws, and City have come out best 31 times. So, all to play for, as Jim Rosenthal has found out in the past few days, an occasion which has an atmosphere all of its own. As Manchester braces itself for the 105th derby and Old Trafford prepares for the biggest gate of the season, the arguments continue to rage around the city's pubs and clubs. Will City upset the form book? Or will United go on and win the title? Well, inside this particular pub in Altrincham are a select band of men well qualified to answer all those questions. A few extra pounds have been put on, some grey hairs have appeared, one hairline's receded dramatically, but there's still no mistaking great crowd pleasers Nobby Styles, Franny Lee and Pat Crerand. 
Derby veterans all who know just what's required at Old Trafford this afternoon. I think there's a lot of tension amongst the players, really, and it's the side that settles down, plays on the day, gets the break, and they go one in front, you know, there's half the crowd are red and half the crowd is blue. The side that goes in front, they get more and more encouragement, and on they go from there. And usually the best thing that can happen in a derby match is somebody scores a goal early on, because then it really sets the game alight. If you, Nobby, were taking a side to Old Trafford, what advice do you think you'd give them? Go on a bus. <laughs> well, I think I, looking at it from that, going and looking now, I think expect every decision to go against it because, uh, and you've got to go and play for that. And I think that's what the city supplies do, city players do. I mean, when I played there, I never realised, you get nearly everything given you. The crowd gets so far behind you that they lift you and they intimidate the referee and you get decisions. I don't, I don't, it'll never change. I mean, it's the top of Guys will attack each other in here until Saturday and then whatever happens on Saturday, one half will not come in. You know, that's why I hope it's a draw. <laughs> <laughs> now, Franny, you scored a hat-trick in a derby at Old Trafford. What do you remember about that? Uh, I think I scored two headers, which is, must have been a freak. I think he'd got about 100 to 1 from Willie Mills for that in one game. But, uh, yeah, uh, an hat-trick at Old Trafford, you know, is, is a dream come true, really. I think the amazing thing about that hat-trick as well, that scored at Old Trafford that game, there's no penalties in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for you to get tripped in the half when they finish up the back of the net. <laughs> the side really got the measure of the length of their passes yet. Lee being pushed there and a header against the post and in from Young. Neil Young the scorer. No, it's Doyle. Doyle the scorer. Oaks with the free kick. Oaks again. Lee. Lee again. And it's there. Styles and meant for Dunn to run on to, but intercepted by Bell. And now Somerby away with Lee unmarked in the middle. There's the pass for him. Can he control it? It's going to go in. Young setting it rolling for Mann. Mann did very well there. Lee, his hat trick. Styles coming into Oaks. And now Kidd. And he's got it! There was a cup match, wasn't there, which uh, ended up 3-0. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm a... Well, yeah, it must be before my time, though, because I don't remember it, to be honest. <laughs> Ryan Kidd had just got in the team, and we were expected to lose, because I think it might have been shortly after the 4-1 game or 4-0 game, for him. And it's like a typical derby match. You expect the team... That there's a, there is a favourite for... Like, United will be favourites on Saturday, but it never ever works out that way. They say the cup tie in particular, a kid who had a great day, and we finished up 1-3-0, a game we were expected to lose. So the, the derbies are like that. Charlton! Lee Morgan has the responsibility. And there it is! Kid and Booth. Flag was up. Kid! Yes, it's been allowed. Neil Young. Lee. Nobody at all in this half of the field. And Brian Kidd is after it. He's there first. Book has got to come to cover. Oaks is in pursuit. It's in! What a goal! How do you feel finally this one's going to go on Saturday? I fancy United, but as I say earlier on, you know, the game's crazy. I mean, you must fancy United strongly. They're at the top of the league and they've got a wealth of talent. Well, obviously, I hope City win, but uh, I don't think they will. You know, I think they get a draw, they'll have done, uh, done reasonably well. But I, I hope it's a draw five apiece. Because <laughs> of the game. <laughs> I think what Franny says, the side to settle down first to win the game. It doesn't matter whether United are on top of the league or whatever. And hopefully the United is settled down first. Pop star Julio Iglesias was a fair keeper before he grabbed hold of the female population. He became a United fan after playing against them for Real Madrid juniors. Julio will taste his first Manchester derby. So will City striker David Cross, a local boy who feels an upset could be on the cards. Probably the pressure's off us for this game because uh, it's at Old Trafford. They're probably expected to win. Uh, if we do anything 
Um, half like getting a result, and that'll be hallelujahs for us. So I think we've got a good chance, really, of, of turning them over because of that. And I think the Old Trafford crowd, although they help United, obviously, every week, and there's going to be 50,000 there, I think it might go against them a wee bit because if they do get under pressure, I think the crowd sometimes turns slightly. Well, to my mind, going back to uh, the days of Dennis Law, Best Charlton, um, I don't think there is any charisma there at the moment. Um, with players like the likes of Wilkins, Muir, and I don't really feel there's anybody to touch them. I force myself once a year to go to Old Trafford. I daren't go there for any other reason or any other time. But to beat United, well, when they got kicked out of the uh, out of Europe this year, that was a very a very good thing. But to answer your question, to beat Manchester United, I think it's the greatest thing that could happen. The City team at the moment, well, I think it's an estate. I think John Pond should go. No, I do, because just wasting the team. Selling Francis, and the gates are just going down, and he's just wasting his time. What do you feel about the managers, lastly? What do you feel about uh, the United manager, Ron Atkinson? All right. I'm not keen on him, though. don't like him. No, no why is I don't that? Like him. I don't know, I think he's edible. I don't like him, really. No. Does he wear too much jewellery, or what? He's a poser. That's all I can say about him. He's just a big poser. I don't like him, though. And John Bond? Oh, he's all right, I like him, but I don't like him, no. Just a big poser. I like, he's all right, though, but John Bond, but I don't like him, no. It's just a big poser. So a couple of heavy tackles here for managers John Bond and Ron Atkinson. But as usual, they had their answers when I spoke to them earlier. And we welcome both managers. Uh, good morning, lads. Well, obviously, the fans have got uh, varied uh, impressions of both of you. Do you ever worry about that? Not too much, because I wouldn't expect too many Manchester United supporters to like me, and uh, so it don't really bother me. But it's the Manchester City fans that don't like oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing that really bothers me. I think they're ground by the day, but there, that's the way the game goes. Isn't it? You know. <laughs> what about you, Ron? <laughs> do, you, do you know you won't come to our place because people say, he reckons people say bad things about him. <laughs> so how do you think I feel when I come? I think they're always going to have a chip at the managers. Managers up there are uh, sort of sitting ducks, aren't they? Well, Ron, you've both got problems with the uh, big money strikers who seem to be going through a little bit of a lean patch. In our case, of course, you're talking about uh, Frank Stapleton. Uh, the encouraging thing from our point of view is over the last three to four games, um, I've seen signs that Frank's returning to his best form. Um, the one good thing you know about him is he's a player of proven quality. He's a good player, and uh, there's no doubt before the end of this season he will have hit form again. I'd just be worried about that for about 30 games. I've got Kevin Reeves who has proven quality and he hadn't scored for 30 games. You really do tax you a little bit. You just wonder when they're going to score again. Well, whatever the outcome of the game, lads, I mean, will you be going out after it for a few drinks or a meal? Actually, he took me out last weekend and I was, I was a bit worried about it because we went out for a meal last Saturday and I was just a bit worried that he was taking me out because he was frightened about what was going to happen this weekend to get out over with quickly. You think he was trying to brave you? <laughs> I think so. No, it was a bad night, actually. He walks into my house last Saturday night and he said, before you start, we're not going to talk about football. I thought, well, that's going to be a hell of an evening, isn't it? Do you know what? I mean, I don't know if we're digressing a wee bit, but I would say that 10 years, 15 years ago, players were at a club for a long time and they were ingrained in that club. Whereas now, I mean, you've got players who are only there a couple of seasons and they don't know about local No, parties. I think that's absolutely mm. right. Mm. I mean, I think if you talk to, to Colin Bell, who comes in our ground quite regularly, and you talk to uh, um, Franny Lee and you talk to Mike Summerby and people like that, I mean, I think overall that they still don't like Manchester United. I mean, I, I don't think it's anything. I, they, they were playing for City for so long, and I don't really think that they like or want Manchester United. I, mean, I would think that Bobby Charlton and people like that would be exactly the same. But I, I believe now that they probably don't stay long enough with the, the football clubs for it to really mean too much to them. Apart from maybe Dennis Tewitt and Joe Corrigan and people like that on our side. Which is a pity in a way. Well, I think it is a pity, isn't it? Because that was, uh, it was a great... I, I think the game desperately needs <coughs> Manchester United and Manchester City in the local derbies, and it desperately needs Liverpool and Everton and, and those local derbies, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, thanks, gentlemen, and uh, may I say good luck to both of you. I don't care who pays for the meal as long as I'm involved. That's just interesting me a little bit, though. Mike Summerby comes in my office every match for a drink. <laughs> and he don't like us. <laughs> well, John and Ron in their usual good form. And everyone here looking forward to a tremendous match in front of a capacity crowd. And a big crowd expected, too, at the Victoria Ground today, where Liverpool face a rejuvenated Stoke side.